It is how long. And I'm going to say it now, I saw him a moment ago, but we could not have done as effective a job as we did without my head of communications, Lance Moore. Yes. Lance has left the building. Uh, I'm an idiot. You see why I needed a head of communications? Um, so, as I said, this is our feedback session, and this is, you can tell us what we didn't do right, what we could have done better, what we did well. This is as much for the future Western Cons as it is for us, and um, all we ask is that you uh, be courteous in your language. We know we didn't do a perfect job, and we're okay with hearing that. <laughs> Okay, do you have the first one here? Yes. Yes. I do. Um, mostly it was a really, really wonderful job, and I thank you all very much for that. Um, on, I think it was Friday morning, the hotel restaurant really got saying we really weren't prepared for what they were getting. I can't imagine that you didn't warn them. What <laughs> happened? And how can we fix it so that doesn't happen at other Western times? Because we have an eating pattern. We know what it is. I have a, I have a bad news answer on that. Um, we did tell them hotels don't like to believe what we tell them. Um, we've had several meetings here, and the, comment to the, the comments to the staff, the official channels, uh, reports going in through day. We were telling people, you know, we might have as many as a thousand people here. We're honestly expecting we could have a thousand people here. And they were going, oh, cool. But then comes the reality of staffing. And yes, it is a problem. Uh, yes, they're going to be noting this. Uh, I honestly don't know if they're going to have better luck than we did. Now, let me add to that, however, that this is the first time in my experience a hotel has been as responsive to the issue as we had this weekend. It got better. It did it get got better. The, and and the, the very, on, actually starting on Thursday, they told us, you warned us that we needed the extra hours and we didn't believe it. And then the first big slam was Friday morning. And so then they brought in more staff. Now, last night at dinner, for slow. We overwhelmed the kitchen. I mean, it, it, they couldn't bring in any more people. They were cooking as fast as they can. Um, so this is something to bring to your hotels. And I do want to commend the hotel management for actually responding to the issue and bringing in as many people as they could. Right, yes. For, for you, um, both of you, I'm going to suggest that you email um, uh, Dave Gallagher and ask him if he can get a reference for you from the, from our hotel on how the food service, how, what the food service demand is like. Okay. Uh, I'd like to add that for Salt Lake, we do have right next door the newly built uh, City Creek uh, uh, shopping center, shopping mall, with a number of restaurants. So there are options uh, to go along with the hotel. We have the advantage, and in some cases disadvantage, of using the other side of the property that we are currently using for four to five local conventions yeah. at this point. Um, we'll actually go up by one next year when uh, WinkyCon moves down to San Diego. And so they have some experience with us in at least slightly smaller groups. Uh, so hopefully we will be able to add that with the information we can get from Dave Gallagher uh, and really actually convince them, yes, if you make the restaurant open and you have the people there, especially the nearby restaurant, you will get the food service turnover. Glenn, I tell you. No, I'm going to just say basically. Kudos for the uh, pick up and run lunches. They were very well priced for what you got. 
uh, I would appreciate a slightly larger vegetarian selection other than soba noodles. But other than that, it was awesome. Thank you. Kudos to the hotel staff for responsiveness to uh, the minor problems that we had in our room. It wasn't working. We mentioned it to the men. In the evening, before we went to bed, they had it fixed. Um, loved the programming. I went to more technical panels this time than I usually do. Go. Go. In regards to food, uh, our experience was fine, but we did talk to other people who uh, on Friday evening especially complained about very, very slow service and having some issues there. The menu was fine. It was nice that it had more than one salad option or more than a dinner salad and one other option. That was good. And I'd like to Hope that your uh, hotels will have that option as well. Yeah, yeah. You got rank. <laughs> ah. um, I, I would like to say that uh, one of the most exciting things about this weekend for me has been the sheer care and thoughtfulness of everybody here. I walk on crutches and it's been so fine to have people just not even think about offering to help, just uh, knowing the right things to say. And connected to that, um, I attended a panel on trans issues, but I won't say issues, trans subjects. And uh, one of the panelists there, Lee Ann Hildebrand, yes. offered this notion of radical hospitality. And I think watching that in action here, and I would love to see some kind of panel early on in either convention where this notion is discussed so that people with any kind of uh, difference from the norm, whether it's physical or emotional or uh, gender presentation, their needs are respected and acknowledged really early on in the convention. But this is, has been wonderful for that, so thank you very much. Kevin, I want to thank you for letting me come and introduce these people to the hell that I work upon. But I also want to say that there was at least a little science programming, but I love science programming. This is a science fiction convention, and I want to encourage everybody involved with this to try and get your local science community to come out and give us pounds. Thank you. Even more, because, you know, the last time I ran science programming at KeyCon, it was a minor, unimportant thing, but the only thing that got written up in Locus. Um, I can, I would like to say, for those of you who don't know, I am a research scientist. Um, at IBM Research for 30 years. And we ran a very tight program this year. You may have noticed that's one reason things are well attended. And so we couldn't have as many things. We had more topics and fewer panels is the best way to describe it. Uh, we, it was a choice we had to make to get the variety we wanted. As we put, as we put it to Christine, you're going to have to be ruthless about what you schedule. So. Uh, Rick, Rick, yeah. 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 Rick and Glenn. A very minor uh, uh, comment. Uh, it was good to see FAM differentiate not enough staff from inattentive staff. And I saw a lot of good tipping, which should not be interpreted as we were happy with the service, but we understood the problems that the, the staff was undergoing at the same time as we were undergoing them as well. That said, I would have liked to have seen a lot more grab-and-go food late into the evening, not when the Starbucks shut down, so that I could have just grabbed a sandwich and gone to the next panel or next event or whatever. So. So, to me, the most exciting and unique aspect of this cluster conference was this room and how you used it. Oh, oh yeah. yes, um, absolutely. 
It was a mixed blessing. Yeah, I'll get there. I'll get there. <laughs> um, uh, you know, the, 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 the concerts, the live performances, um, it brought a life and energy all of its own that I think um, it was really blessed to do. Um, uh, it was uh, not like anything I'd ever seen before. And that's really, really well done. And as, well, as you know, I know that when you experiment, you sometimes encounter challenges. And to me, the chief challenge was sound loop. Uh, even not during the big band concert at night, but even during the day, if you were in one of the side rooms, sometimes if someone was doing a particular vocal presentation on stage, it bled you know, into the room. And so I'm not sure how I would address that, but it's something to think about how that sound plays against other things. We particularly wanted to design um, a very strong buzz to this convention. And uh, decided to use this room as our Zydeco is the best way to describe it. We chose to put the program items we, that we knew would make noise all weekend <coughs> on the back hallway. So Family Friendly was back there, Filth was back there, and all of our maker style um, program items were in that back room. And that meant, unfortunately, that the talking panels were in this row where they were backed up to this stage. The other, frankly, mistake we made was not anticipating we would need amplification for anything from this stage. We didn't realize how bright and noisy this room would be with even three people chatting in the corner. And so Friday morning, uh, I know it was very difficult to hear panelists who were on this stage. We have the technology already installed, but we did not yet have a technician to operate it. I want to thank Snapple for coming out and doing a great job for us. They've already gone home. Um, and, uh, we actually hired them, and I can tell you that the owners uh, donated their services, dramatically discounted the rental on the equipment, and our chief expense there was paying for their employees who worked above and beyond for us. And I'm really pleased with what they did, but I was not going to touch their soundboard on Friday morning. Thursday. Thursday morning. Thursday evening, somebody else came to the bank. Oh, yes. Thursday, we had sound thanks to Lisa Hayes, somebody else that I could have to. Um, is it working now? Okay, you need, to, you need to talk straight into it right here. Yep. Uh, my partner and I, I consider us uh, to be panelists. You know, one of the, uh, perhaps the main thing that we enjoy at Con is, is the programming, the panels. And this was the best Con programming ever. So thank you so, so very, very much for that. I wanted to, to point out that um, there were a remarkable number of panels that addressed the issues of women in fandom. And I was, that was totally unexpected and such a joy. Um, I'm a woman over 50 who very rarely appears in uh, media, in um, science fiction or any other, other thing. And to have a panel actually that addresses that, woo hoo! Um, just thank you so much, that was, that was great. Um. I, well, so, yeah, there's, there are, there are, I'll let you in on two, well, one of them isn't a secret, one of them was kind of a secret that didn't ever pan out. I mean, the first thing is, that's a discussion that is really hitting fandom and, and genre zeitgeist at the moment, uh, with some spectacularly bad things that have been, that have been happening recently or noticed recently. Uh, and this is something that women's, women's issues as, as female fans has been something that problems female fans have experienced are not getting swept under the rug anymore. Uh, the other thing is, well, first of all, we have Christine as our program head. Uh, Thank but you, Christine. We have, and we have Nicola and Kelly as, as yes. guests. But we had started talking with, and unfortunately, it just that we didn't have enough bandwidth ourselves to get this done. Um, we were actually talking with the Tip Tree Awards motherboard about potentially hosting their uh, their award ceremony, but it was just 
we, we were spread too thin to actually, we were spread too thin to make that happen, um, and, and get it, that all set up. But that was one of the things that when, when we asked Christine to start putting together the program, we knew that if, we, if, if there was a chance that we were going to be hosting Tip Tree Awards, there would definitely have to be a program that related to it. And even though, even though the discussions didn't go anywhere, and that's all on us. That's all on us for not having enough time and enough bandwidth to follow up with them a lot more. Even without that, we knew that this was going to contribute to a better program. Also, uh, Lance Moore and I are both past another title holder in San Jose, and that role, if you take it on, the Santa Clara County leather title, that is a community role, you're expected to be um, a positive voice in the face for a marginalized community. And so we both have a great deal of experience at looking at that and trying to look through other people's eyes uh, and make people comfortable with who we all are. So it was a no-brainer uh, to include that uh, that program theme. We really wanted it. It's it's so contemporary. It's so important, and we wanted it, and we wanted it to be there to be strong. Um, and I'm really pleased with how that part of our program. Came out. Yeah. I'm going to bring the feedback for just a second before before Bicho goes. We have a small basket of lost and found items. Uh, I'm not actually going to read them off because I don't want people to just come and say, hey, that's mine. Um, it will be up <laughs> in the uh, con suite uh, for dead bugs. So. Half of that will go to the hotel. Okay, where's the mic? Bijou. Oh, Bijou. Okay. Well, a little addendum on the, uh, the women's uh, issues things. They were, they, it was up to now, most conventions, if they had women in science fiction, the answer would be, would be yep, very short panel. And uh, same thing, gays in science fiction, short. I mean, we're done. Because that's not a question you're going to panel on. But you ran lines on how to say no, when to say no, and empowered some women right out of there. I told you about this earlier. And you also ran one on the princess syndrome, which we got to discuss so thoroughly that it became a political discussion. <laughs> this is the thing you were talking about how to address it, how to see it, how to do something about it, instead of just, you know, women in science fiction. I've been invited on those kind of panels in boring as hell, so I don't do it. Now, one little criticism that isn't your fault is the art show room should have been much larger. I know you had to have a lockable room, but honestly, uh, it, you know, frankly, we actually chained our art show together one time in Toronto. The hotel didn't like it, and the, and the fire department didn't like it, because there's nobody in there. So don't worry about it. But, uh, and by the way, when we were the change and I have the keys. But the thing is that we discovered from the very first art show that I started and ever since, I don't care how big a room you give them, the art show will expand the Guaranteed. And you had some great art, you had more, if they could have had more room. Including an exhibit of several original Rackens and a William Pinlin and a bunch of neat stuff like that. So, Really, uh, as I say, I know that wasn't your fault, but for a future reference, uh, give them a big art show. Um, thank you very much. Sorry. A comment on that first thing, Kevin. A comment on that first thing is, yes, we need more space for the art show. The second comment on that is, yes, we were stupid and we should have actually remeasured everything a fourth time, including the panels. Uh, one thing we discovered when we unloaded the truck was the panels were six inches wider than we thought they were. <laughs> so yes, that was that. Was, there is a there is a chunk of it that is just the space we had. There is a chunk of it of our screw up of not double checking everything one more time. And I swear that all these rooms shrank after we measured. <laughs> all of and and we actually measured all of the rooms. We so. tried we tried very hard to find the right size hotel. We were in Seattle last year and really felt that we were rattling around. And we looked and at a giant octopus. We were, looked around at a half dozen properties, including the Double Tree, which is where the last uh, Sacramento Western Con was. And it's too big. The function rooms are not together. If we wanted to have the buzz we wanted, that wouldn't happen. Uh, plus, 
the, there are some logistics flaws in the design that are until it still hasn't been improved 27 years later. So we were do we picked this hotel as the best of our choices. There was one other property, but it was downtown, and the rooms were already sold for the railroad uh, convention. <laughs> so while the convention space was lovely, there were no rooms. So we're going to take a can take a couple out here on the outer yeah. edges, and we'll come back in now. Okay, we'll come back to you, I promise. <coughs> one of the thing, one of the advantages and frankly disadvantages of the space that we have for 68 is that we have one really, really, really big room for a Western Con size convention that we cannot subdivide with air walls. So because of that, we will have plenty of space for as much art show as Glenn can pull up together. You were in the land of weird hotel uh, trade-offs and, oh, yeah. and compromises. Yeah, this, every convention facility is trade-offs and compromises. This is the one that, on the trade-offs and compromises and availability, is the one that would work in Sacramento for the amount of people we thought we had. So. so as a customer, I have to say, and I know this wasn't the original idea, but I think the end result was spectacular, is the series of panels that made up the Masquerade 101. So that you didn't get one panel that tried to cram in everything you needed to know if you hadn't done a masquerade before. That, I think that worked out really, really well, having three different panels on how to prep for a masquerade. Thank you, Lisa. Costuming background. <laughs> um, this is probably more of a cautionary tale than anything, but um, my son and uh, son-in-law and daughter when they checked in on Wednesday night because of a change in plans with their family we tried to cancel the reservation for tonight and they're having to pay for tonight still. And I know at least one other change that I've run into but that's their policy now that any change in the reservation has to occur 24 hours before, before the right. beginning of the reservation. So just something to be careful about. Yeah, that's that section of the website I'm sure that you don't read when you get the reservation. But they were a little upset that they weren't able to uh, on Wednesday night cancel the reservation they had for tonight. One of our ongoing adventures. Yeah, that yeah, it might be something that, because I don't know how common it is. I don't think this is only the second time I've run into it in the chain. Okay. Is it? Yeah, it probably is. But just be aware. And one of our ongoing adventures was the corporate reservation system. Yeah. Uh, yeah I'm not happy with us. We weren't uh, thrilled with the fact that it kept offering a sort of race that weren't ours. Um, so, uh, Red Hat. I want to uh, say thank you for Channel 66. It wasn't uh, it wasn't advertised enough. I didn't I didn't see it uh, advertised enough. So probably a lot of people didn't know about it. I, I want to know where I can find a TV guide for it though, so I can track down some of the things I saw, and because I'd like to revisit them. So um, I we didn't it. know we were going to have. We didn't know for certain it was going to work or what channel it was going to be on until. Wednesday night? Yeah, Wednesday. Uh, oh, by the way, Ken and Jerry stand up, please. Yeah. Uh, we're, uh, we're going to be leaving the Western 66 site live. It's on my server. It doesn't cost me anything more than the server costs. Um, and I will happily publish Ken's, uh, I'll get you a PDF. Ken's schedule. I also uh, hope to post uh, copies of the, the Daily Zine as well. I know we ran out of the color edition, the message edition, and especially I want to get that one up to make sure that everybody can get copies of it. So, yeah. there, there, there were some more color ones back there. Okay, because they was gone for one. a while. Maybe they need new toner. Is that the problem? Uh, we swapped in toner. It's still... It's a little iffy, but then again, that's the last one. Oh, okay. Yeah, also, I, I give parties three times a year at Kong's, and this room that I had this time was one of the best I've ever had uh, and, and in every way, and I'm so grateful. Uh, the party was wonderful, and, and I'm so glad for the wonderful room I had. 
And the third thing I want to mention is the, the farm suite is fabulous. One of the best. Real food if you wanted it, but sinful food if you wanted it. And all, all the attendees were attentive. I mean, all the workers were attentive, and I, I really appreciated it. And I've, I've been going to at least three conventions every year for nigh on 40 years, starting with the Witchcraft and Sorcery Convention in 1970. Uh, this is one of the ones I will remember as the best. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and right now, we can her publicly because she's now come down from the con suite. Chris, would you please stand up? Yay! Yay, Chris! So we won this. Chris and Pat, Pat said, oh my God, you did a Sacramento themed party and you're going to do the convention Sacramento. And she and Chris said, we haven't run a con suite before, but we'd like to run yours. <laughs> and one of the conventions we didn't think before, uh, Consonance, the Bay Area yes. Filth Convention, a lot of our con suite staff came from the Consonance staff. So we really need to thank them, too. Oh, okay, uh, pick somebody. I didn't have anybody queued here now. I have a, I have a time, and then we'll get it back to okay. it. Before, be, okay, oh, before you start, um, Chris and Pat, I don't know if you were here when we were doing closing, but Lisa said you can order pizza. Okay, good. Mm. There will be pizza at the party. Woo! Oh. Put more olives? <laughs> do, do we have any olives left? Yes, we have olives. Yeah. By the way, by the way, Granzella's delicatessen does ship. <laughs> uh, and 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 Granz, let's, let's yeah, I'll get on. Okay, okay. Uh, two quick items, and this is for next year's convention. I thought the con suite here was indeed exceptionally well run when it was open. I realize that's a staffing problem, but I found the hours distressingly short. The ideal is a con suite that is open 24 hours a day. That's impossible. But it should be there as much as possible to be, as it were, the court of last resort where you can go and find friends and food and hang out. And you just didn't have enough people to pull it off for this one. Actually, the first answer is yes, more hours would have been really, really good. Uh, it actually was less a staffing issue and more of a party space issue because the limited suites in the hotel. We had to close so that the groups that were using the con suite for sponsored parties could set up. And then the suite stayed closed. And my point is the total hours, I'm not talking about when it was switched off and sponsored, the total hours were remarkably short compared to many conventions I go to. Just file it away for that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I will also be honest, we really wanted to encourage the use of the atrium and lobby space for as much social as possible. And that worked very well. Okay, what hours were they open? Six. We were open from... 9 a.m. to 1 a.m. basically, except for that short close for the transfer. Are they open 24 hours? Yes. Many of them are. And, okay, and it's it, not really a tradition in the yeah. area. It, no, yeah. it's not an argument. I, I'm yeah. saying is, when it was open, it was excellent. I, no, the, the second item is uh, you know, a, a more personal item. Uh, John Hertz arranges the Dose of Art Tours, which I am a co-perpetrator in a lot. It's really important that information be in the program book and the program grid with specifics. Because if you don't have that, people don't show up. They yeah. don't know about it. It's not enough to simply have it say dose and art, art to it. That's like saying, having yeah. a that says art. That is our fault. Uh, John tried to phone us, and our phone battery on our chargeable phone uh, actually had completely died to the point where it couldn't hold a charge for more than five minutes. And because we don't use the landline very often, it took us six weeks to notice it. <laughs> so that is entirely, totally, completely our fault. our fault. And I'm not complaining because with the small size of the room here, smaller dosing groups actually work better. <laughs> it worked out. But, again, but I mentioned for the, for the future ones, get the information in there because the specifics matter for getting people to show up. And I hate it when I, someone comes to me later and says, you gave a dosing tour earlier? I wanted to go to that. That's not fair. I mean, it's nice for my ego, but not good for the time. We need to thank Emily, who provided our online web schedule that would oh, fit yeah. in your phone. That's great. It was so nimble that as the program
program changed, we could update it and you could get the changes on your phone every day, which was really, really helpful. But we should have had more information in the program item listings on the online program for the docent tours. Absolutely correct. All right, where do you, where do you want to go here now? Well, let's go grab Ben and, and Lisa, and then, and then we'll, we'll work back, back, back over here. And then okay. we'll work back, sorry. A <laughs> <laughs> couple of things. Um, the first <coughs> is, it was a wonderful Western Con. Thank you. Thank you. Um, a few criticisms, some of which you can't do anything about. Well, obviously, none of them you can do anything about. <laughs> I don't the, know, Ready for your scar on my guess a time machine. The hotel's welcome letter turned off a fair number of people. Yeah. That probably... One should try to see if one can work with one's hotels in order to ensure that the welcome letter is even even that if was it is going to hotel. Yeah, even that was a surprise to us. Right. We didn't know that was happening at all until we got it also. Mm -hmm. they exactly. Often exactly. Do that, though, hotels so. fre hotels frequently do welcome letters. The important thing to know is since they are going to if you ask to see it, you'll be able to get a chance to say, um, er, and that is really going to be useful. Um, I, I, I know you were surprised by it. The, the purpose of my comment was not to criticize you. It was so that those guys know that there's going to be a welcome letter and they should look at it. And absolutely right. A welcome letter writer in a contract, had we thought about it, would have been even a wealth, even just the little initial and sign off. Yeah, and you don't even need that. Generally, the hotels are perfectly willing to let you look at the welcome letter. You just have to ask. Next. Um, next, the program I thought was really, really good, but and here's where the but comes in. I know you had more really, really good ideas than you could fit in. I think that if you had gone to 50 minute items in hour long slots, you would have been able to get in more of the good ideas without too badly hurting the items that you in fact had. Because basically you would have gotten one more slot per day per room. I realize that there are trade-offs on that, but it's something that people should think about, especially when you've got especially when you've got more good ideas than you have rooms to put them in. And that's a wonderful position to be in, and congratulations on being in that position. You did a wonderful job. Thank you. That was, the short answer is, yes, you're right, that was a judgment call we made. We it's went round and round several times about how long, sure. do it, nope. how long we do it, how long we have the sessions be. And we had attended a couple of recent conventions that used the shorter slots and things were so rushed and harried that people were complaining that the schedule was too compressed. And we wanted this to be a social, slightly relaxed, we wanted to encourage people to, to be enthusiastic and energetic. So we made the judgment call to give up some program items in order to have that little bit of extra you, social space. Can you send unused ideas to next year so that they can have it as their base? <laughs> So that found last year's Westracon kind of a social desert because of the traffic plan they designed. And I wanted to really combat that feeling. So that was part of that judgment call. Uh, you okay? Uh, uh, first, I want to say thank you to Kevin and Andy. And I think their choice of being in a smaller venue than too big is a very good choice. An excellent choice. I'd rather bump into fans and not find any at all. <laughs> so this is a, an excellent venue and the spacing and the fact that we owned the property. I mean, everybody you ran into, there was 99 chance that it was, well, another fan and that was just made the whole thing warm. And while Kevin thanked me, I want to thank the convention for allowing me to provide the sound equipment I had on the first night 
was a dream come true for me as a early Star Trek fan to have my equipment being used by Bijo Trumbull and David Gerald. <laughs> it was it was just a fantasy come true for me. So thank you very much. Are you gonna have an I should do that. Where are we going next? Okay. I think he was He's next. He's been waiting a long time. Uh, I wanted to make a positive comment about programming. Uh, this this, this <laughs> comment has had the most consistently uh, well-prepared and effective moderators of any time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know whether that's just something you specifically asked them to do or whether you just picked excellent moderators. It was, it was really I just good. Spun the crystal ball and guessed sometimes. Uh, moderation is a difficult thing to do. Those of you who have been moderators know that, and those of you who haven't been moderators know that, we you see it not going well. We try to make it be seamless, and um, I would like to thank everybody who was a participant in the program in any way, shape, or form, whether they moderated or not, because they all rose to, to, the, to the challenge, and uh, at least all the panels I got a chance to pop in on was really great. So I thank you very much on their behalf. And I would like to add a small uh, footnote to that. Uh, we combined um, our knowledge of all the talents and personality we had being involved in the program. We knew we had some hot topics. We knew we had some strong personalities that we were going to be putting on those hot topic panels. I love you, B. Joe. <laughs> <laughs> and David, wherever that mean man is. Um, and, uh, and, and I have had to moderate those panels. So on a couple of cases, we actually specifically tapped people who were not edited, who, were, who had no horse in the race, who were not experts on the subject, but were centered, calm individuals, and their job was to moderate so that the well-informed experts with strong opinions would be sure to give each other space to express those opinions. And I want to thank those special moderators especially. They did a great job. So if you were looking for the Masquerade Edition, there are some more. Yes, the, the programming was great. And the one comment I would make for the upcoming uh, convention is if you could, even though you may not know what the programming is going to be, um, if you could put in saying it will start at this time on this day and end on this time on this day, it would help people make their travel plans better. Um, so just give people that boundary then they know when to, when to make plans for showing up and leaving. Um, as early as and, and that would be a great thing. And also, I want to say, I really like, really like the, the time slots of one hour and 15 minutes to get around. I think that, that was really yeah. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. We, we will acknowledge we did not do the best job in the world of communicating the big picture schedule information as early as we could have, even, yeah, even knowing that we knew where the slots were going to fit, and that's something that I'm coming in and nudge them on, on, on that, they, that they're going to want someone on their committee who's specifically just a calendar and schedule management person. I think mine is, I think mine's all going to be kudos. Um, great cool. hotel contract, you know, getting the, you know, you know, convention gets credit no matter what rate you booked under or however you managed it. Now, congratulations on the, the free parking. You know, parking is free when you started the whole contract stuff. Well, that's an easy one to get. <laughs> yes, yeah. like, who thinks of it? Yeah. Dave. <laughs> um, Fancy Lounge was great fun. Uh, <laughs> 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 okay. That's Chris Garcia. <laughs> Chris Garcia brings brings. Fanzines back to to well, and, and, and makes fanzines the cool thing they were when they were new-ish. No, they were cool then. <laughs> <laughs> well, they were more nerdy than cool, but never mind that. And the last is, yes, I thought we fit very nice. The yes, SEO programming may have been tight a couple of times, but it's so nice to have a central bar area where times there was you know, 50, 60 people there just gathering and socializing. You knew you could find people there if you weren't heading to the concert. And That's yeah, what we hoped for. So I congratulate you on that. I know it's always a tough call.
I want to acknowledge the bartending staff here. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, especially Jason um, at the lobby bar, who on several occasions noticed I'd forgotten to close out my tab and didn't panic, knew I would be coming back and let us take care of it, because sometimes I'm a ditz. <laughs> Uh, I want to just start by saying that I really liked the phone schedules. It was really convenient and I, I thought that worked really, really well. Um, and my best positive comment is like, I really like the variety of panels, um, but some of the panels I found were, like, I don't know how to describe it, like the description didn't quite match what I expected them to be. Like, I went to the, the Finding Your Muse one, and I kind of thought it would be about finding your muse use for any artistic pursuits. So it was all about writing the entire time, which is great for all the writers who really loved it, but like, I, I wish it had been a broader artistic thing or said specifically in the, the description that it was all about writing. No. No. It wasn't intended to be all about writing. <laughs> yeah, what happens when you, when you put together a panel, um, you give them a description, hopefully you've done a decent job of writing the description. Hopefully it's not crap. I was once on the gays and lesbians and fans and their issues and concerns. That was the entire description. Let's just say we didn't, we went to kind of feral on that topic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the, the reality is that the program participants look, or the panel participants look at the title and the schedule and I've been there, said, I don't think this is going to work the way that it's written up, and let's rewrite the description. And usually, they will say at the beginning that they're tweaking the description. Uh, sometimes not. But yeah, that's, and this is, there's no accounting for panelists. I know I've been one. <laughs> uh, so yes, I, I understand your, I understand that, that I totally understand that you're disappointed that the panel didn't match the description, and believe me, I've been there myself on the, the panel doesn't match the description. Uh, the Ask the Costner panel went completely off the rails. It was great fun, but it was not what we thought it was going to be. <laughs> so yes, that's, that's something that your program head, your program ops people, um, and actually, this was, was our, our program came in, came in later than we really wanted it to. On the other hand, we're happy with the result on the, yeah. on the actual panels, but it came in later than we wanted it to, so we had less opportunity for the program participants to email each other and get feedback back to program to get descriptions and information tweaked. Uh, and again, that's on us. And this is something to offer in your instructions to your moderators is that if they are shifting the focus from the exact description, they should say so at the beginning of the panel. I would also suggest that they say it at the midpoint because some people come in late to them. Yeah. Okay, so, oh, yeah. So, uh, I was just wanting to continue on with what she started in that the, one of the sessions I was thinking for the panel on muses or things like that, instead of making it wider centric, have a writer representative, a costumer representative, an artist representative, a sign deal, if you can. But that would help mix up the ideas and still touch everybody that has an interest in it. Um, outside of that, I really was pleased to see how much costuming panels there were. Because most conventions have done away with costuming information at all. You barely have a masquerade. And so I was really You know, we hate costume. That. We hate it so much. <laughs> Our program head is totally into nothing but literature and only and only and only ace double headers and we, we hate costuming so much we threw a party for 900 costumers in San Jose. <laughs> uh, so so. One of the specific things that we wanted to call it, what, what wanted to call out was get, and I, and I say this not having been in costume at all this weekend, getting more people at a Western Con in costume, more costume related program, uh, more of the more of the creative fan that 
used to be big at Western Palm and help make that big again. I want to thank John Hertz for directing the All Costume Awards. Yes. And I powdered at him. I was running around in costumes on occasion, and I never got a ribbon, and he informed me very politely that I was the chair, and I won, I won Best in Show at a World Con, and he thought it was more important that people he didn't recognize in costumes get ribbons than Kevin get yet another ribbon to put in the box. <laughs> I also am pleased with the um, phone program. It was great, except I wanted to know more about the film programming, and there wasn't any. Even when I searched for it, there, it said, what are you talking about? There's no film here. So I, I was really disappointed in the lack of film programming uh, being written down anywhere that I knew how to balance it with the rest of the things I wanted to see. The schedule came in late, and it didn't get merged in. And again, that's one of those. That's on us. Um, actually, back to Joey Two Slice back there. Where? Joe, Rice. <laughs> Behind him. Okay. Uh, just, just a quick comment about this space here. Uh, Jerry came up with a great name for the programming events that were here. It was Velcro panels. It's the sort of thing you just sort of walk through and get stuck on what's happening here. So if you have a space like this for the next two, you know, put stuff that'll be fun, engaging, and will catch the attention of people just walking through and go, oh, hey, that, that, that looks neat. And uh, we were discussing this before the uh, closing, cer uh, closing ceremonies, that uh, that may also have attributed to a, a spike in the match game PM that we did uh, around the corner, because people came and watched and went, what the heck is this on Thursday? And then said, oh, I better go see the next one when it's down there. That was entirely strategic. That was deliberate. <laughs> Just a quick comment. Um, although it could have been a very potentially serious situation, I thought the, the uh, host and the party goer at the 12th floor and the Thursday night blackout with such a high spirit and, and just a good cheer, it became one of the high points of the evening, frankly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Best blackout ever. It was a company that had uh, taken over an abandoned building and squatters, except with much fresher linen. <laughs> And I, I just uh, wanted, that was, uh, speaks well to the convention goers, uh, as to our, well, our good cheer and to our being adapted to adverse situations. So we, we turned it around and made the best of it. I was up there in the dark reminding people to just keep calm and carry on, and we all know how good we are at carrying on. <laughs> <laughs> and don't panic. Don't panic. Yeah. 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 I follow one of the folk issue which is right here. Which ah. rather, than, rather than me repeat them, I have her say. If you didn't get your fill, we're having a dead dog fill in Sonoma right now. It'll go until they kick us out around midnight, so come on over when you're done hissing and purring. Abby, you help us load the truck. <laughs> <laughs> so, which is hard to place to be loaded. Okay, so we're going to pass this over to Radar, but I was going to say, on the blackout thing, Yes, we had, a, um, we had a chat with the hotel about the emergency lighting situation. Um, yes, the emergency lighting not automatically kicking in until an engineer could kick it over. That's bad. Was, was, that was bad. Uh, but on the other hand, how many people in this room have been at a convention where a hotel emergency resulted in an evacuation? Oh. <laughs> This is, this is so much better than a hotel emergency that would have that resulted in an evacuation. <laughs> um, Phil and Kathy Gus, could you please stand up? Thank you for throwing a wonderful night. The ninjas were awesome. Everything about the masquerade was awesome. I'm really pleased to have been a part of it. And thank you so much for working so hard on making it really freaking awesome. <laughs> I'm going to watch the sound item. Anybody drop a, drop a, a group that brought to me because I wanted to lo lose some filth ribbons uh, from LA. Okay, so um, we've got Garcia hand and the John O hand. So you're closer to Garcia. And then we'll scoot back up front and get uh, Jim. 
So first off, thanks for the skybox seat. Uh, <laughs> The fanzine champagne room, <laughs> yeah, the go-go cage at times. Um, but uh, for next year, uh, that's that's y'all. Next year being, you know, as long as two years out. Um, what I'd really love to see is, and I wish I had thought of this beforehand, but it came up at a panel actually the last time we did, was a focus on each of the novels that are up for the best novel kingdom. Yeah. And yes, yeah. And that, you know, doing something like John Hurt's classic of science fiction, except for not classics, and for now, would be like awesome. And I might have to pull over next year. <laughs> <laughs> um, while, while Kevin, oh, we're next. Uh, uh, John Hurt. Uh, uh, while, while you walk it over there, I want to comment about the masquerade. I have to admit, I was very nervous about having to run a masquerade where we couldn't rehearse on stage. I want to commend all the uh, entrants for rolling with that. Um, and I was uh, really thrilled with the energy and quality of the costumes that went across the stage last night. And that is part, in good part to the hard work that Phil and Kathy put in. But it's also to you for uh, rolling with what was going on and bringing your costumes and having fun on stage. Thank you. Um, just want to point something out from a previous point, or that Dave really hates costuming too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no, this day. This, this that day. day. Yes. Yeah, you, you may recall I mentioned going to a convention he chaired before. It was uh, Costume Con 23. Three. Three. 23. Yes, 23 in Ogden, Utah. That's where I got the play. Oh, that's right. That was our election. That's where we were. It wasn't the one right before us. That was our election. But it's where I got to do Le Jazz Hot live on the stage at the Piri Egyptian oh, okay. Theater. Yeah. So we got a hand here with the. Uh, oh, you want it? Yeah. Okay, you can have it first, and then we'll give it to Jim. I get it at the end, too. Well, if we don't give it to him, we'll turn the microphone off. <laughs> Point. Minor detail. Uh, being hardcore techno geek. Uh, for future reference, you, I mean, when you go look at a facility, you look at how many spaces are available, how big are the spaces, pay a little more attention to the acoustics, please. What? Uh, yes. I mean, you, Can you say Zinfandel? What? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You get closer to the microphones? Yes. Well, I can also turn it up. But, I mean, one of the things that I bumped into is working in Sonoma is that room is so small the focus shouldn't have needed sound support we needed it to get over the panelists needed sound support yes i mean that hits your budget for equipment staff uh putting equipment into a room takes up space that could otherwise be used for seating which you know you're impacting your uh not only your participants but your members sometimes you can't do anything about it but it tends to slip by until you know, suddenly wake up one morning and go, oh shit. Yeah. We, we needed a better tech review of the space for programming. And we actually have people on. We other things that we have people involved in programming who are actually good at that. It's just it's it's like I will I, I will I will also yeah. say that that was a slip up on our part. Well, and an ongoing problem we had was the hotel didn't know what they had. Uh, get tracking down the power map for this building. We didn't find out until long after, and until Smashworld got on site, that there in fact was. Um, there were connectors we could use for a high energy PDU, which is what you need to run big lights on the far side of the ballroom, because the hotel engineer assured me there weren't any. <laughs> there were. There were, fortunately, more than one circuit behind it, so we could have sound and light on separate circuits. Yeah. Here's, but, here's uh, another secret. This hotel changed ownership between when we started the <coughs> and when we bought it. And, well, no, the contracts were all fine. It's just we found that a lot of people knew a lot, a lot of people working for this property knew a lot less about the property than, than we would have hoped. So, yeah, there was, it's like, there's no... There's no key, there's nowhere we can plug in PDUs. It's like, okay, well, I guess we'll work with that. And yeah. Okay. I lost track of where you were heading with you. Uh, yeah, I've been waiting for a while. And then we'll pop it up, we went. 
and then come back. One thing I missed. One thing I missed uh, in the programming was that on the doors of uh, most programs, they usually put up a list of times and events. Yes, that was our screw up. Yeah, I thought about it on Friday. No, that's too late. Uh, it's just really quick because it goes back a long way from finding your music. But sometimes if you make programming very specific, it keeps people from wandering off. So you might have separate ones like finding your muse calliope, finding your muse tripsy you know, and so on like that. No, no, I'm not finding here. Uh, I'm serious. Uh, you could actually have a branch of programs where, you know, where, you know, it specializes in dance or song writing or whatever, where each muse represents the field that you're talking about. That's all. Um, this was a deliberate choice and an instruction we gave to Christine. We did not want strongly typed, strongly tracked program items. We wanted the feeling of a wide and diverse and broad assortment of topics without there being a, a narrow science track, a narrow costume track. We wanted people to be amazed at all the different things we were doing. Uh, now, that said, we didn't want solidly focused program items because, as is mentioned before, personal opinion, a program item that doesn't have a solid title, a solid description, a solid hook to it, is probably going to end up being a bland program item. Unless, unless the moderator and the participants are emailing back and forth the week or three before and saying, this sucks, and this is what we're going to do. This is how we're going to turn this into something good. I don't think we had any bland program items, did we? Okay. All right. So let's get to Rick. So just to be perverse, um, you, you, never. It was, no. it was, it was a unexpected blessing to be in Zinfandel when Unwoman was playing out here, interviewing David Maxine in there, and recording it for the podcast later because I had a wonderful soundtrack going on in the background. <laughs> well, you and also there. record a podcast in a busy rest, in a busy I do. rest, right after right 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 right. right. the sound uh, really bounces uh, the livelihood of the podcast ground. And on that note, the, we had such a great time with your audience for the live podcast, and the cool. sound system, sound people were just above and beyond. They were not letting me compromise on the sound that we were going to put out to the audience, and I uh, just have nothing but thanks for that. They, yeah, what? I, they I heard about how everything had to loop back to them and then back to you. Well, yeah. And they, they also wanted to demonstrate after the issues with the phenomenon sound, which, if you hadn't read the newsletter, there were traffic issues, and we were unable to do a full sound check for the phenomenons, which is why the vocals were not balanced with the instruments. It wasn't just because they're a punk rock band. It's, yeah. because, <laughs> it's, um, because, it's because we were unable to do a sound check. I know that they wanted to demonstrate that they knew what the hell they were doing and that they could provide good sound because they were worried that because they couldn't do the sound check and because then they couldn't balance things that they didn't have control over, that it was making them look bad. And they wanted to make sure everything else uh, ran much better after that. It was so good, we all took our monitoring headphones off because it was better to listen to the ambient sound part. Cool. The uh, anti-feedback system that Josh was tuning was one of the most amazing pieces yeah. of technology I have ever seen. <laughs> Yeah, registration. Uh, it worked beautifully when you could find it and get to it. Uh, on Thursday, I was a little bit uncertain about the times, ended up showing up a bit late, and a couple other people also showed up late. And I get here and just like, okay, well, where is it? When is it? That's the thing. Find a staff member, go, where's registration? They're like, eh, I don't know. Okay, it is there's a, on the there are big so, chunks. Yeah. Of, there are big chunks of there are big chunks of our screw up there. We had signage to explain where Reg was, and it didn't make it up out there. Um, also, we should have had more hours for registration, which was, we should have had more people for registration. Those are our screw-ups. Um, and the where registration was, was just a, we were on plan C for our space allocation. In the grand scheme of things, I think it worked out. But yes. there's a lot of things that we screwed up there. 
uh, on little little details that could have been that could have been handled. Yeah. Well, once, once you got past that, it was a great convention. I had a great time. You know, thank you. Oh, were you who I was tweeting back and forth with on Thursday nights? <coughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just. Oh God, that was just. I would tweet, and yeah, just the whole hour between tweets, and if it had been compressed down to about a half an hour, it would have been such, we would have had all your problems solved. Okay. <laughs> so I'm sorry about that. So, but hey, we're in the forcing, registration, mm -hmm. we're in the opening ceremony. Yeah. So my comment is really a, 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 a gratitude to our Thursday sound system because uh, Nicola and Kelly were doing reading in Zinfandel and when match game started it was overwhelming. You, we could not hear, hear ourselves think and one very brief comment to our sound maven and it became bearable. It was it, it enhanced rather than overwhelming so I want to thank you very much for that. It made reading much more smooth. I do want to address a little bit of that. Uh, if we had known that was going to happen, the opening title music is the loudest part of the whole show, and it only lasts 30 seconds. So then, every, then it starts to come down anyway. So we would know. But so, we're, we're next. So I was going to say. So note for both of you, if you haven't noted it already, the yeah sound bleed from different areas with doors open and doors closed, because yeah the there's the basic boominess of this room, but the bleed into those. Panel, those those panel rooms, even when there and was a Shasta, and well, the, oh, the bleed out of Shasta from all the conversations in Shasta, uh, yeah, that's that's something that it was a much bigger issue than we had forecast when we had walked through in committee meetings, as we had never seen what kind of load that was. So this is the largest conference this hotel staff has ever worked with. <laughs> what was the final body count? Um, I mentioned it before, it was 767 warm bodies, 883 total members. <laughs> so some of it is supporting membership, some of it is, is no-shows. We, we did have a small box of people who weren't able to participate. I wanted to add that uh, uh, I'm very conscious of the need to test our facility under uh, heavy uh, demand. So uh, I've talked to our committee members to visit the Marriott when they have an event in there that is to capacity, both to test the sound, but also to check uh, Wi-Fi access, which, you know, worked absolutely perfectly early Thursday morning in every room that I went into, and that was the last time I was able to connect. So I want to find out what the pattern is at the Marriott so that we know what we need to fix. Also, if you're considering, we've considered getting the Wi-Fi sponsored. We uh, couldn't get an answer out of the hotel on how much it would cost to sponsor it. So that's something that you're going to want to, you're going to want to uh, uh, extract out of the hotel as quickly as possible. It's not that you want it for free. If you want to know what it costs. I mean, if you can get it for free and you don't have a sponsor, it's better. But we actually have we actually have people associated with the convention who work who have worked in wholesale broadband and who may have, if the price was reasonable, may have been able to get a sponsorship. And I, it's a we wanted to do it, we didn't do it. Some of that on us, but mostly we couldn't get a price. Well, we we do have. Uh, in the function space, pre-Wi-Fi. That's actually amazing, because that's usually the hardest thing to get. Yes. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah. And we are, I've already, when we're preparing our budget, actually we're doing this Friday morning here, uh, one of the things I discussed with my budget director was very specifically, we will be, we are definitely planning on getting Wi-Fi in the foyer paid for through the convention. And then to the dealer's room area, we will make sure that's available to the dealers for not unreasonable price for the weekend. All right. Thank you. Um, well, uh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to thank Kevin Mandy and WesterCon 66 for being brave enough to try an entire day of music at the yeah, convention. Uh, I think it went, it went pretty well. Uh, we had a lot of people coming up to me in the afterwards saying that they really thank uh, you guys for letting it be a whole day of music. And I think everyone really liked it. Awesome. <laughs> uh, 
Well, they might be. They might be. Oh, right. no, they might be. Yeah, I'm sorry, because I walked over there. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to thank you for letting us do two shows of Match Game SF. Yeah. If there's any way to make it be possible to have, a, uh, have two shows, it's going to make the second show better. And, and just did, that's the, that simple. And we promised Tia she could be on a panel. <laughs> and yep, we were going to be able to be on a panel until Saturday night. So there had to be two shows. That's right. And, and, and I also want to thank everybody who turned up for it because that was probably the best, our best show ever. So, okay. Lisa? Best show ever. <laughs> um, I want to revisit registration. Nobody has ever done registration perfect. <laughs> Just pre we want to, everyone wants to. And I want to compliment on one fact and push this for the upcoming conventions was we showed up Wednesday early and somebody was there trying to get to deal with pre-registration for people who were already there. You can never open pre-reg too early. It's just really not too possible if there are people coming into your hotel that's the first person you want to have in the hotel as soon as you can possibly get them there because it, it, speed, it makes the people who come in early really happy. And second, when you do have your bridge open for the big crush, well, gosh, you got rid of a whole lot of people ahead of time and that makes it easier. So I just want to make sure you can't open reg, pre-reg at least, too early. We, uh, the reg online system we used performed uh, admirably. Uh, we couldn't open Thursday morning until 10 because we had, I just switched 11. <coughs> 11 because I needed the extra two hours to get the on-site printing integrated uh, because I couldn't throw the switch mm -hmm. to go from uh, advanced registration to on-site until the last minute. I wanted to let people... Well, I understand that, but your pre-reg, you can never open it too early. But... <laughs> The, the flip side of that is we were actually checking people in with that online system so we could keep track of who was here. Yes. And that was very important. It's important for uh, our, our wrap up at the hotel. It was important to our load. And we did not expect 500 people to show up at 11 on Thursday. <laughs> uh, and of those 500, 450 of them were pre read uh, and I thanked Linda before and her crew. Um, we did okay, and had we realized how crazy it would be, we would have been a little faster, but we also had space constraints. And if I were doing it again, Thursday morning reg, pre-reg, would have been out of the line. And we would have just done a uh, new reg at the desk. And this they should is, take uh, notes on Yes. Uh, this is going up on YouTube, you know. So. <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, just a, a comment on the registration, a slightly silly comment. No matter how badly registration could have run here this weekend, it was not the worst registration was run this weekend. If anybody's on the Smoths list, you probably already know what I'm talking about. No, I haven't looked at Smoths since Wednesday. The list that can converge convergence went. Oh, you had a follow-up. You had a follow-up to this. One of my yeah, one of my concerns is I'm I'm flying in. The earlier I know when that first pre-reg is available, it's better for me because I set my flight schedules at least three to six weeks before the convention. And in this case, it was it could have been December 30th. So we need to know. The first instant you're planning to open pre-reg so we can be here. I we had actually hoped that doing the sneak the sneak preview on Thursday with the dealer's room not badged would help take the pressure off of the mad rush to pre-reg. We wanted people to be able to go into the shop and socialize and we hoped that would buffer the uh, pre-reg and I just didn't uh, take into account how much you all were going to want your badges right away, no matter what. It was a miscalculation. Actually, we've got... Over there on the side. Okay. You don't want to. Okay. No, as a uh, minion, as a volunteer here, at the last minute, 
Usually, whenever I'm at any conventions, there's some kind of something. I would say to get volunteers, you got to give them some kind of something. Sometimes I work with got you know free membership or something. I'm not going to say I didn't get them. But it would help for the future if you guys want to get volunteers. You can say, okay, a volunteer get and put the sign up. Also with registration, the only thing I have is, unfortunately, because of the room, we have dealer's room added, which is wonderful for the dealer's room, but having the fan tables or the other tables in there with registration, when, I'm sure there was not 500, but when there was 100 people in that room trying to register and hanging out with the tables also crowded, it made it very chaotic. And I packed swag, so the had maybe 300 or 400 bags in the room Wednesday, instead of having to do it while we're registering Thursday, would have been ideal, because I've done this before, and generally speaking, they say, okay, y'all, you're flying and you're driving in the night before, you're gonna go out this room, we're gonna pack stuff. Everything is gonna be in there ready for registration on X amount of time, on whatever day that it's done. I've been to the convention forever. I used to do it for a living. Uh, only it's exactly the, the same thing for me, you know, never anything else but just somebody who was manual labor, basically. The bank stuffing was a slip up on our part, not to have, that not having announced that there was going to be bank stuffing earlier. That was our screw up. Yeah, yeah. It's still and good to have anything you can do in advance. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, yes. Registration is good. And in regards to... And that stuff is telling us all day yeah. and San Diego whatever, but anything. And, and in you know, I'm, so, I'm sorry, June was one of our minions, and I, I'm sorry, I forgot to give you your lovely parting gift. You did? I didn't even get a little piece. I'll get, I'll get you one later. <laughs> and in regards, in regards to... Uh, take, take it to Sharon. Take the mic to Sharon. In regards to, to uh, perks and swag and, and comps and that sort of thing, uh, WesterCon usually operates on uh, what we call the Worldcon model, where because it's a new committee every year in a new city, you don't have advanced funds. So we're not like an annual convention that's the same place every year. We have no money left over from last year. So if we're going to be able to offer any uh, financial uh, remuneration, it has to come after the fact, after the books are balanced. And we also, since we started as a hoax, we had no war chest developed from our campaign. We started with zero dollars. No, I take that back. We started with the voting fees. We did not start with any pre-supports. So, so we were on an even tighter budget. So um, we offered a discount to our staff members. We offered some discount to our volunteers. And that was what we could do. And we couldn't comp all of our program participants. It, it was just the financial reality of the situation, the way that a traveling convention works. Well, I wasn't saying that. Yeah. That was necessary. I'm just saying, like, when they had the volunteer table, say, if you volunteer for two hours, you get a book. Well, yeah. oh, and then you have to have somebody to go. People to do it. Yes, yes. No, that's no, that's 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 understood. Understood. You have to go get the, the books to Yeah, but I wanted to, 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 to folks who, who may not be familiar with the situation, who've been to other conventions where if you volunteer, you get in free. That's why we couldn't do that, because uh, we had to pay the bill. No, we could pay the bills. And once we know we paid the bills, uh, and and what we owe our parent corporation, then we look to see if there's anything left over. And one of our, one of our goals for this was to keep the registration costs down. Uh, when we had people people who are not familiar with what science fiction conventions often cost to reg register for, cringe at the idea of sixty five dollars for the weekend, but. We've been to other conventions where $65 for the weekend would have been, for a, for a four-day event, would have been relatively cheap. Uh, and we wanted to keep, that we wanted to try to keep our, our pre-reg rates and our at-the-door rates as sensibly low as possible so that coming into Sacramento where there aren't a lot of conventions besides the comic and anime conventions, which are much cheaper than us because they're running on a different model, uh, that our price point wouldn't scare people away too much. Hi. I live in Massachusetts, 
Sorry. I live in Massachusetts. My first WesterCon was in Sacramento in 1985. I've been to all but two since, and this is one of the best ones there was. Thank you. I'm glad that I was there at the very, very start of at the very, very start of the site selection, and uh, <laughs> not too much <laughs> when the votes were looking like, I'm sorry, <laughs> the votes were looking that um, you were going to get this, and um, you did a great job. The hotel was great, the front desk staff, um, the concierge were all, are all great, the bar and the restaurants were a little bit overwhelmed, but that's just Side, mm -hmm. and I had a great time helping out, and you did a great job. Thank you. Okay, we've got Sandra hasn't said anything yet. Uh oh, Sandra and uh, Sandra hasn't said anything yet. And then we'll roll it forward. I love you guys. I did not expect 24 feet to be just the box. Those of you don't know, I drove the truck. The truck is way too to be loaded. Really, I'd like it loaded before Dead Dog starts. The art show has done a magnificent job of packing up and being ready to go and to be staged. I need labor to help me. Yeah. And then we will be loading everything except for the last of the Dead Dog. That will go in at the very end. That means for a morning it does. But I would really appreciate a few helping hands to help move our channels and boxes. Maybe that's, a, maybe that's the point where we can end it. Uh, I, you want to take another? You can take one. How many more do you want to take? Uh, Glenn, Glenn has been waiting for quite a while. Okay. Uh, last, let's cue the last ones up. Glenn and one other, maybe? Yeah, I mean, technically we're supposed to be wrapping this panel in 11 minutes, so. Dude, this is actually you guys. We started early. Yeah, we're okay. talking about the official end time, so. Are we following you? Yes. No, no, we're not following you. Go. No, yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> Glenn? Yeah, oh, I'm going to get noise there now. So th this is actually for you, Kevin. Um, uh, uh, as you know, I sat to see one on the first game, and there's a little girl named Tia who won the prize and was allowed to be a, a star in a uh, in match game, and so I went off and got into a glass of wine, because that's what you do when you play a match game. <laughs> you, you drink, right? <laughs> right? Anyway, but uh, um, she was adorable. And, uh, but, what, but more importantly, we made her day. I mean, we made her calm. She was entranced. She had the best time. And so I, I was happy to, to vacate my spot for her. Uh, you really, really did make her con. And her mom came to me afterward and thanked me and, and everything else. So, uh, you know, there, there's a new fan who will, who will have a many new fan, many new cons ahead of her. They were at the, God help me, she was nine years old and she was at the after dark match game. <laughs> but her parents were there with her and didn't take her out. And she was a <laughs> contestant on the after dark match game. Wow. And had better answers and had than most better of us. Than the panel did. <laughs> <laughs> so we put our heads together while we were up on the upper riser and on the spot gave her a membership. Yeah. Uh, that is why Tia was here and we were thrilled to have her. Yeah. Cool. Okay. We, uh, yeah. yeah. So they're first, and then back to what I'm saying. This is kudos to my favorite panel. It was the Tricorder Star Trek panel with Christine Doyle, and um, I just wanted to give a shout out to that, and also um, to the combination of the themes, Star Trek and scientific medicine, medical theme. You combine both. That was throughout the programming and that was just delightful. Thank you so much. And one uh, for those of you who don't know when she's not working, uh, or if you didn't go to her panel, you probably, if you went to her panel, you probably know. When Christine isn't following, volunteering at convention, she's a doctor. So, uh, um, this is actually going to be for Salt Lake City because I was in the SeaTac airport and realized I didn't know how I was supposed to get to from the Sacramento airport to here. I went to your website. Guess what? I couldn't find the information uh, when I was trying to find it on the web page on was I supposed to use a taxi? Was there a shuttle from the air from here to the airport? 
Yeah. How did well, so, um, Oops. Yeah, that was as much my bad as anything else. Because so, you had actually collected all the information. Well, I, but that was we we yeah we screwed up on that. We were getting traffic updates out and transit updates out on Facebook and on Twitter, and we had the major major stuff about the uh, the uh, exit closure on the main web page, but we didn't have, this is our screw up, we didn't have the how to get their page. Fortunately, there was a prime shuttle people at the airport. Actually, that was my fault. I had it. It was a version control issue. At some point, we lost that information off the hotel page. And I, until you mentioned it, I didn't realize it had happened, because it was up originally. Okay. I apologize. And let's let Chaz be the last one. Chaz, P.A. Chaz. Westergaard, 65 fan guest, Chaz Boston City. Yes. Like that? Okay, yes. yes. Um, last year at Westercon, I was fan guest of honor and hosted one party, a picture picture taken while eating tacos and wearing Hawaiian shirts party. Um, <laughs> This convention, I hosted two room parties, the Lost Time 40 peanut butter and jelly party on Thursday night with fireworks and blackout. Um, and <laughs> last night, the Kansas City 2016 World Con bid speakeasy party. Yeah. And uh, it was very well attended. And in fact, I give out stickers to count how many people come. The party attendance was comparable to a thousand person convention. And, and I'm told you had 700 and change. So you had a very, very vibrant partying crowd. It was a lot of fun, a lot of great energy up there. We went through 280 stickers. It was a lot of fun, and um, next time we just won't buy quite as much fruit because that's pretty much all we had left over and had it done. That's it. We had a lovely time. I was Kansas thrilled with our party hosts. I was thrilled with our party hosts. This is. And this is, this is nothing on us, as a matter of fact, this is so nothing on us because we were dealing with sorting out what the rooms up on that 12th floor really were. Um, little secret. We were told that they were different than what we found out a month and a half ago when we did the last meeting here. Uh, this is nothing on us. This is everything on the people who came in and hosted parties. This is... The, this is all of you. This is the best party floor parties at a Western Con that I have been to in ages, and I can make, take no credit whatsoever for that. <laughs> and I, I want to add to that, we had a uh, uh, couple of uh, noise complaints, which uh, we did our best to deal with. But I want to thank the people going to the parties for remembering that we were sharing the hotel with a few other people. And um, the thing that struck me, and I think this is how I want to close, the thing that struck me was starting on Wednesday, as people began to arrive, everybody arrived with a smile on their face. Even if it was just relief that they'd finally gotten here after eight hours of a flat tire. But everybody came in with a smile on their face, expecting that they were going to enjoy themselves. And I saw those smiles stay on their faces all weekend. That was the best gift I could have asked for. Thank you. Well, I, uh, just a quick note, I believe our website right now has current information for the airport, I'm happy to announce that the Trax trolley now goes directly from the terminal to within a half a block of the Marriott. So you're welcome now to take Yeah, yeah, I, I put in every mail on that track. Yeah. And, uh, and now I actually look forward to uh, my uh, Onions and Roses session from how courteous you all have been. Thank you for that. And uh, hopefully we'll uh, uh, once again enjoy your company in uh, 2014.